In this video we're taking our first steps towards making OpenDog version 2 autonomous so that it can map and navigate its environment. Now normally a robot with wheels can have its wheel position measured so it knows where it is roughly using dead reckoning in its environment and that's really important towards drawing the map and knowing where it's navigating to as well as a number of other sensors. OpenDog though has quite springy legs they don't always touch the ground properly and sometimes they slip and all sorts of other things happen so it's not really going to be possible to use the leg positions to estimate its position. In the last really useful robot project we fitted an Intel RealSense camera that can measure depth so I can use this with Nvidia deep learning models to recognize objects just like a normal webcam and we can also measure the depth to specific objects. This hopefully means we can pick out a specific object that we want to recognize and then measure the depth to it and then calculate the inverse kinematics to go and grasp that object or manipulate it with a robot arm and that's all coming up in the series. Although we could use that camera a bit like a lidar and try and locate the robot in 3D space that way, what we really need for tracking OpenDog is the Intel RealSense tracking camera and I've got the T265 camera. The camera appears to have stereo image sensing on the front, on the back are two M3 mounting bolts, the depth camera actually had a tripod mount but this one doesn't have one. And USB just plugs into the side and it's one of those double connectors often used on this sort of camera. Using the RealSense viewer provided by Intel we can see the two stereo camera images as well as the inertial measurement unit data and in the top right we can see its position in space. I'm assuming it's using the inertial measurement unit for pitch roll and yaw and it's using optical tracking for moving around in translation. If I cover the cameras you can see that that piece in the top right gets totally lost even though the IMU still works. In 3D view we can basically move it around and see that it is moving in space pretty reliably and this allows us to draw a line so we can see where the camera is and if it's returned to the origin. This is in 3D so if I turn it sideways we can see the front and back motion works as well and that seems to be pretty reliable. If we bring it back to where it was to start with we should see that it hasn't really lost tracking and its position tracking seems to have been pretty good. But what about if I wave it around the room and move it a lot further? So I put it on a long USB cable, I'm just going to move around as if I'm a mad drone or something and then put it back on the origin and see if it goes back again. So we can see it doesn't really but then it suddenly jumps which is a rather interesting feature. Let's try that a few more times. Well that time it wasn't too bad and it didn't lose tracking so let's move it a bit further all around the room. Well that time wasn't too bad either and I'm just trying to push it back to the origin there but let's move it again all around onto the floor and again we can see that funny jump that it does. So at this stage I'm assuming it can recognise the start point with vision recognition or something and it can replace itself if it thinks it's there but it's lost tracking and that seems to work fairly consistently. Of course we should check it doesn't just do that whenever the camera's still which wouldn't be very useful at all. So I'm going to put the camera down on the floor and leave it for a bit and we can see that it reliably positions it and leaves it there. So it only seems to jump back to the origin when it actually is at the origin but it's lost tracking. So that time's not too bad. Let's try putting it somewhere else on the table. Yep, that stays where I've actually put it. And now if I move it back again, that time it didn't lose tracking so that's quite good. It's actually a pretty good sensor. And now let's pick it up again and move it around in some more wild moves. So this time it has really lost tracking and again it shoots back again. My only other concern is that if you really shake the camera then it does really lose tracking and goes shooting off and of course the dog jumps on the ground a lot and it's not really very stable. So I don't know what effect this would have if we put it on the dog and then the dog does walking and the body shakes all around whether it's just going to be ridiculous and it's going to lose tracking all the time. But there's only one way to find out so I 3D printed a bracket that attaches to the M3 bolt holes in the back and that will fit onto OpenDog where I previously had the Raspberry Pi camera. So I've just attached that on the front there. We do have a Jetson Nano on this robot and if you want to see that in action check out the last OpenDog video to see how I did gesture recognition using an NVIDIA deep learning model that I trained using transfer learning and that allows me to drive the dog all around without the remote. However I haven't installed ROS on that and I don't know if this is going to work at all so for now we're just going to use a really long USB cable and the manual controller and link the camera to my workstation. 
I've strain relieved the cables using a bit of velcro attaching them to the frame so they don't get pulled out. So all we have to do is walk the dog around and fire up the Intel RealSense camera viewer. So I'm just going to walk around a bit and walk back to where I was and see if the tracking looks like it's okay. Um, we can see the dog's really shaky and we can see that camera moving pretty accurately actually as the dog's moving. But it doesn't seem to be losing tracking like it was when I shook the camera by hand. You can see the wobble in the dog there. But obviously that's reflected in the sensor quite well. And it seems to return to the origin quite well when I move it back without doing any of those funny jumps. So I think probably for this sort of robot it's probably quite usable and this seems to be working pretty well. So let's have a look at the top view. There we go, we can see the dog wobbling as it walks but it seems to be tracking pretty accurately so I'm pretty hopeful this is actually going to work. It's pretty hard to remember where I actually started. I probably should have marked the position of the feet or something on the floor but if I go back roughly to where it was then it seems to fairly accurately return in the tracking as well. So this is looking pretty good. To make mapping and navigation work we're going to use ROS as we did with a really useful robot. So this camera is provided with a ROS node which you can just install and that worked pretty easily. So you can see here we're moving the camera in Arvis. Camera Odon frame is our stationary reference in the environment and you can see lots of other things piled onto what's moving. So these are all of the accelerometer, gyro and optical flow for the camera as well as camera link which is what we actually want to track the position of the robot. Check out the really useful robot project for more information on ROS, but the high level information is that TF, the transform, is the glue that sticks everything together. So in this example we have Odom as a stationary reference and you can see the robot's base link driving away from it and moving in space as the robot moves. That robot also has a laser scanning rangefinder or LiDAR that it uses to map and navigate in the environment. So we also need a transform between the base link of the robot and the laser and you can see that right here in this example where the laser is floating around above the base link and coupled to it. That means that the robot knows where the laser is, it knows where the robot is and it knows that ODOM, the stationary reference in the environment, is still and that means that it can build the map and later navigate in it. This robot can autonomously navigate pretty well. You can see we've set up a 2D nav goal there, which is the red arrow, it's planned a path, and now it's navigating to it. And it's really important that the odometry is set up really accurately so it knows where it is, and that aligns with the laser really well. We can also see the additional pink areas on the map, which is marking and clearing, so it's comparing that with the walls it knows are on the map it's already made, and also if additional objects get in the way, it can mark those on the map, and clear them when they disappear so the robot can navigate around people or moving objects that would appear in the environment. But for Open Dog, what we need to do is replace the wheel odometry, that's measuring those wheel positions because it doesn't have any wheels to locate the robot, with the Intel RealSense tracking camera. So I've attached that to a 3D print with the laser. In hindsight, I should have probably put the laser on the top so it gets a 360 view, but it's only got a very small blind spot, which is exactly the same as the really useful robot. I brought up the node for the tracking camera and the laser and made sure my stationary reference is the camera Odom frame, and now we can see one transposed on the other. So we should find that the laser scan stays pretty still, apart from where you can see that wiggly line where my arm is in front of it, and as we rotate and move the laser and the camera in translation, the map should stay still essentially, and that means we've got good alignment between our substitute odometry device in this case and the laser scan. To test this out and show you there's absolutely no wheel odometry, I've taped it down to a bit of cardboard, and I'm going to pull that along the floor on some pieces of string and see if we can draw a map. I know this won't work quite as well as if we had it on a mobile base like a radio controlled car or a mobile robot we could drive around because we can't get coverage multiple times in different areas. Obviously I can only pull it towards me and rotate it a little bit but nonetheless we can still see the TF moving and that seems to be moving pretty accurately from its stationary reference and we can see that it's actually fleshing the map out. So as I drive past the stairwell there you can see that it's drawing that out and that actually seems to be working pretty well despite having no wheel odometry at all and relying solely on that camera so it knows where the laser is. That just leaves one thing to try which is putting the whole thing on open dog and walking around and trying to draw a map. Although I'm not sure if we should be shaking the laser that much but we'll see what happens. That's the initial map getting generated from whatever it can see from a stationary standpoint. So let's walk around a lot 
and see what happens. Now I'm not sure if the walls are going to get blurred here or whether it's going to work reliably, but we can go over the areas several times, unlike when we pulled it with a piece of string. So I'm going to walk backwards and forwards quite a bit. You can see the dog is really wobbly, but of course that laser is coupled to the tracking camera really well and the tracking camera tracks really well, so the two should stay in sync. So pretty impressive how well that's drawn the map actually. It looks pretty square, my walls aren't blurred and nothing funny has happened. So I'll just drive up here a bit and see what we can do. There's some stuff stored which is why it looks a bit of a mess and there are quite a lot of objects like table legs and things around so we can't get to all of the walls but the walls we can see seem to work pretty well so I'm pretty happy with how well that works. I'm pretty surprised of how well that works actually. I didn't expect it to build the map so reliably, especially wobbling around on the dog the whole time. I should mention Hector Slam though, which is a ROS node that will draw a map just from the laser. So you can just get the LiDAR, move it around on your hand and it will draw a map of the room. And that works pretty reliably. However, it doesn't deliver any TF, any transforms or any odometry messages like the tracking camera does and those are really needed for the navigation side of things. So I'm not sure how you'd use Hectoslam for navigation, or at least I can't see how to do that. If you think you know better though, then put your answers in the comments to this video. So it'd be really good to expand this module out, perhaps add a Raspberry Pi or a Jetson Nano, and make a kind of universal mapping and navigation unit that can go on any robot. Because at this point, we're not reliant on the wheel odometry like we are in the really useful robot, because we've got that tracking camera instead. So it could go on a dog robot, a wheeled robot, or a tank robot perhaps that's got treads that are slipping in the mud and the odometry data would be rubbish, or it could go on a drone. So that's something I'm gonna expand in the future, see if I can make an all-in-one module, and then just have outputs, perhaps with an Arduino and the Ros Serial Library, that'll just tell the robot which direction to move in and get all of the other messages we need from the tracking camera. So for the navigation stat, we do need one more message, which is the ODOM message, which is essentially how far forward it's moved and how much it's turned, as opposed to the transform, which is X, Y coordinates and how much it's turned. And the ODOM message also contains an estimate about velocity. But I'm pretty sure we could read the transform message, TF, and go and derive that data pretty much for ODOM from TF, or at least that's something I'm gonna try and do and see how reliably it works. So if you check back for more information on this, if you wanna see more on the really useful robot, check out the playlist. There's also a Rosin AI playlist that's got deep learning models and all sorts of other projects in. Most of the things I publish are open source and those are all on GitHub. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description to this video. All right, that's all for now.